one Mewtwo. So you can still copy either the Pikachu Zekrom or the Raichu and Alolan Raichu attacks, but also hit for weakness on opposing Mewtwo and Mews. Yeah, and one important thing of note too is we did have a new set released for this tournament that was legal to play in Vivid Voltage. And the first Vivid Voltage card that we're actually gonna see possibly be played here is Francesco's playing one copy of Leon. Ooh, we'll have to see how that comes into play, adding that extra damage. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of these players' accomplishments as well. Want to see kind of how they've succeeded in the Pokemon trading card game. As we see Francesco here, top 32 at a regional championships and kind of back what we talked to with Owen. These tournaments just really becoming opportunities for players to make a name for themselves. Yeah, and I love to see it because this is just how you build your player base. And we're going to be talking about these guys for tournaments to come and it has been great to see all these newer faces up in the coverage area. All right, well, we'll go ahead and kick it down to this game. We'll see the ever important coin flip. Who is going first? Who is going second here? I think generally as Pikachu Zekrom, you want to go second here, try to get off that turn one, electrify with the Bolton V. And then also as Arceus Dialga Palkia, you kind of want to go first just so you can get yourself that opportunity to get the attachment down and also get off the Intrepid Sword. Yeah, and looking at Christian's hand here, it's looking pretty sweet. Two quick balls with two metal energies to possibly discard to them. That will be able to find everything in the deck that you need for this turn one, possibly missing only the water energy for something like next turn. Yeah, with your opponent playing uh, Team Yelgrunt and Crushing Hammers in their list, you know, your opponent has a lot of ways to discard energy. So I think you actually feel better about attaching the metal here. It's just about finding the water on the next turn. Also got to throw a little shout out here to Christian using those super sweet promo Zashin Vs, the gold on black. I'm a big fan of those cards. Yeah, they look super nice. And at least we get a look at something different other than the, the regular Zashian V that is being <laughs> We're so played. used to seeing it, right? Yeah, yeah. All right, quick ball from Francesco's side of things. Discards a lightning energy. So exactly what you want to see going uh, your turn one if you're Pikachu and Zekrom. Yeah, both of these players, funny enough, starting the, the Dene GX, definitely not ideal on either end. Um, and especially as well from Francesco, I think this is a matchup where sometimes if your hand plays out well enough, you can really avoid putting those the Denes and Crobats in play, but you just kind of lose that option um, whenever you just start it, right? And it's this is the matchup that you really don't want to start it in for sure. And well, there we see a switch to that Boltoon V. Will be able to electrify at the end of the turn to get a couple more energies, but needs to find some other attackers to get those energies onto. You don't want to attach those to the Dedenne GX. Definitely not. Looking for quick balls, electromagnetic radar, cherish ball will also work here. So I wonder if we'll see Francesco grab the Pikachu and Zekrom right away, or maybe the Mewtwo and Mew, since it can copy either the attack of Raichu and Raichu or of Pikachu and Zekrom. It definitely keeps Christian guessing a little bit in the coming turns about what route you're actually going to go for if you're going to go for that full blitz or surprise tandem shock or even one of the big GX attacks here. Pretty solid hand here from Christian. Does need to find just a water energy and Ooh. wow, there it is. Perfect. Ultra creation turn two and... I mean, Christian really has everything they need in hand. Boss's orders plus an energy will be three prizes on the Dene GX this coming turn. But Francesco will have an opportunity to respond to that here if they can get off the Tandem Shock. I think that would be huge this turn. Yeah, uh, just being able to find this Altered Creation GX without even having to play a supporter to get it set up here. And now it's really just the pressure is on Francesco here to get that Tandem Shock, like you said, off. Uh, really just needs to get their board set and a good presence here. Does find that third energy though. All right, and with that Raichu and Alolan Raichu in play, Tandem Shock will hit for 160 damage and also paralyze the active Pokemon. And Christian really doesn't have too much to work with. I think we're just going to probably need to be seeing an Intrepid Sword to end the turn, but you've already gotten off the key part of this game, right? Getting off that uh, altered creation. And, uh, you know, even if this 
Arceus Dialga and Palkia GX goes down this turn, you still got to feel like you're in a pretty solid spot with a Metal Saucer and a Metal Energy in hand. Yeah, but you do have just the Mewtwo and Mew GX staring you down, not really being able to take the knockout on it. So it's just going to keep building the lightning energies throughout the game, especially against this Arceus Dalga and Palkia. We'll be able to take the knockout. Tails on the Crushing Hammer, though. That's pretty big. Yeah, hammers this turn are going to be important for Francesco. I think Francesco needs to try to dig and hit some more hammers. You're in a solid spot here if you take this KO plus get rid of those energies on the Zacian V. So, and we'll see the reset stamp as well, limiting this hand a bit from Christian, which is interesting since your opponent hasn't really played too, too much. Yeah, you kind of run the risk of, well, do you really have everything and you just got it naturally or you just doing everything you can and it was kind of a little bit of both from christian so shuffling the hand back in don't see quite as many things as you would like to for the coming turn francesco chose to play the professor's research there but i think discarded the team yell grunt a play i really think i would have liked to have seen is just use team yell grunt try to slow down this zashin v on the bench make it so it's difficult to attack this turn and still full blitz you're still picking up the ko regardless and what are you really looking for off of the re research right all we saw was the bench of the uh of the Tepu Koko Prism Star, right? So not too much paying off there, but uh, still playing off the hand very well here for Christian. Gonna go ahead and get down another Zashin V and just probably wants to find some Metal Saucers here, get some more energies in play to make it easier to close out this game on the next turn. Well, it does find one of the Metal Saucers, chooses not to play it though. And there is the Brave Blade taking the knockout on that Boltoon V. Three prizes left for Christian. And it'll be interesting to see what this Mewtwo actually will end up pulling off here. There is that Pikachu and Zekrom GX in the discard, so we could see a Tag Bolt. And this could be big. Is the Leon in the Ooh. discard? Oh no, just the boss's orders. This will work out as well. We can see the boss's orders to bring up the Crobat or the Dedenne on the bench. And then Tag Bolt GX will take four prizes to end the game. Oh, I thought we were going to see the Leon there to pick up the KO on the Zacian V, but boss's orders ends up working out just the same way. And Francesco uh, looked like... Uh, it looked like Christian was in just a really solid spot that game, and Francesco was able to find a way back into it, pulling off the big, big tag bolt to close it out. Well, this is why the Mewtwo and Mew GX is in here, uh, partially for this reason, is 270 HP. It's really hard for the Arceus Dog Apalkia deck to actually hit that number. So 260 right. is their pretty much max cap for the whole match. So having that extra Pokemon to kind of soak up damage, but still do the Pikachu and Zekrom attacks that are the best attacks for the deck to get you set up, it, we really saw the power there. Yeah, and just having the ability to utilize multiple different attacks. Like we saw that Mewtwo use three different attacks across three different turns, right? The Tandem Shock, the Full Blitz, and then closing things off with the Tag Bolt GX. Very well played by Francesco, and uh, we'll have to see in game number two here how things are going to be different. I wonder, maybe we could see Christian choose to go second in the game, try to get off the turn one Ultra Creation. Uh, you know, maybe sometimes in these situations, you're down a game in the Players' Cup. Of course, it is double elimination, but sometimes you got to kind of uh, risk it a little bit and see if you can pull off those big turn one plays. And well, we have the next game ready to go and let's take it down there and see what kind of plays these players could do to pull it out on top here. We'll see this coin flip. Of course, in best of three, Christian uh, does get to choose if they'd like to go first or second. It looks like they have chosen to go first and oh no. Oh no. This is this... not what you want to see here in game two, down a game already. You start Crobat V and nothing else in the hand. This hand is unplayable. You can attach a metal energy. <laughs> oh, no, he top decks another metal. But that is it. Oh, this is not good for Christian. And Francesco is feeling great moving into their first turn. Of course, started the Bolton V, which is the ideal starter here. And... I mean, Christian uh, just not getting a, any good fortune here in this second game. Yeah, this is not what you want to see. 
if you're a fan of Christian, but if you're an uh, enemy of Archaeus Dalgopalkia, like a lot of people are, this you, you're probably like, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Justice is served in the minds of many right now. We'll see this electromagnetic radar come out from Francesco and... We'll have to see what Pokemon they eye up here. Could be the Dedenne GX, of course, in order to draw some cards with Dead A Change. Could just get one of those tag team lightning type Pokemon in play in order to electrify two. I mean, there's no reason to really push too, too aggressively as Francesco. Uh, you know, there's not really a way that you could take a knockout here on turn one. It is technically possible with a lot of energy switch plays, with getting rid of a couple energies with you know, for the Tapu Koko and stuff like that, but it seems just pretty unlikely. All right, well, there is the Dedenne GX, and oh. Lightning Energy hits the discard, so... Oh, maybe it's not that hard. Thing. Now, okay, well, Christian gonna... Or, sorry, Francesco here gonna go ahead and just attach to the active. Um, could have maybe gone for the, uh, you know, attached to the bench just to see if you get the energy switch plus the Tapu Koko, but we don't really know what the composition of the hand was there for Francesco. Oh, no. So. Um, Another metal energy off the top, and that's just a concession oh, from Christian no. there. Oh, no. Just the this quick concede. Just did not want to play that game out after those two draws and the hand that they were presented with for that game, too. Especially the fact that your opponent that's playing Pikachu and Zekrom is sitting across from you with three energy in play. You know they're going to get the knockout next turn with that Tag Bolt GX, and that's just a rough way to go out of winner's bracket. Oh, man, super tough for Christian. Of course, not eliminated, still has a chance in the loser's bracket, but, man, that's just one of those terrible situations where you look at your opening hand and you're like, okay... It's not great, but I've got a lot of good cards I could top deck, right? I could get a Quick Ball, I could get a Zacian, I could get a Supporter. Okay, I drew a Metal Energy. That's not great. We'll go ahead and attach, pass. We've got a turn. We'll see what we top deck here. Oh, it's another Metal Energy, and it just does not work out there for Christian in that game. And uh, if anything, to take away from the first two games we've watched today, I think the consistency of Pikachu and Zekrom has reigned supreme thus far. Yeah, well, it just has really good options going first or second, and we saw it there with Boltoon V, and so it really just gives your deck a little bit of flexibility going into matchups that wouldn't be quite as favored just because you're pretty much always guaranteed to attack turn two or three. Well, with that update from the winner's bracket, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the bracket here and see what the update looks like take a look at what players are moving on from these other games. Of course, we watched Brent and Francesco win their games. Now we've got down on the other end, Renzo and Hugo winning their games just a couple games away from the winner's finals here. Yeah, uh, Renzo notably taking down Zach Lesage, who got second place at the recent Oceania International Championship.